Hi guys and incredibly welcome to another Play Rescue YouTube episode right from the rescue zoo and we have one of the rescue citizens, Ayo. Um, please don't poop more on my screen, Ayo. <laughs> Yesterday live on the Play Rescue stream on Twitch, I asked you guys to give me 10 different questions regarding the rescue zoo and uh, yeah, this is the video, video, video we are doing now and uh, let's just take it from the top. First question coming in here from Renard. What's your favorite animal? <laughs> really? Right, so one of the most asked questions on the Play Rescue stream is What is your favorite animal? And I always have the same question No, I always have the same answer every time That after 20 years of living here with the 600 animals in the rescue So you simply don't have favorite animals anymore It, it more or less just becomes one big animal kind of strange. You want to be part of the stream or just want to say that? <laughs> they all just become like one big animal where you just care for all of them. But I also think that you start looking more professionally at the animals because you have to be this in the center of very tough decisions and even more with rescue animals in general. It, it's more or less is a retirement home for the animals and a lot of them might only, might only have a few good years left because they come very old and they've been through a lot. So I think it's very important, just like if you're a doctor, is that you have to take a bit of uh, a distance from it, else it simply gets too tough. And really having 600 <laughs> different animals where a lot of them is your favorites, it, it's just hard. You have to have both your empathy for the animals still, but still distance yourself so you're able to do it on a daily basis and see some of the horrible things and cases when the animals come in and need rehabilitation. Right, next up is a question from Teacher. What is the game about and when can we play? So we are developing, if you don't know, a game called Rescue Wars Online, which is a MMO, RPG, but a different kind. It's more or less our own community game. You are part of the rescue team and you go on rescue missions and you fight off evil and then you get to build your own rescue zoo. But we're starting the game out very early and we're only letting in people who are part of the community. So the more you watch the stream, if you're a sub, uh, it's uh, going to be a higher chance of getting into the game here in the start. But for a long period, you can apply to become part of the, you can say, the Play Rescue Guild and play with us. Um, but uh, yeah, we're not sure where it's going to go, but uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, hopefully you guys uh, will stay tuned for updates about the new game. Right, next question is coming from Lisa Out My Brain, who said, let me see, what are the best ways we can contribute and help from across the sea? And first of all, Lisa Out My Brain, thank you so much for your generous donation yesterday live on the stream. Very much appreciated. And uh, to answer your question, the best ways we can contribute, well, obviously, money. Money is always a good thing, but a lot of people do, simply don't have a lot of money, and well, that's our the case for us. And we have 600 mouths to feed. Um, it's about 45 grand a month to feed all of these animals. But uh, if you want to contribute a lot, <laughs> your time is one of the best things you can give to us. And meaning, if you go watch a video, you comment on it, you go watch the stream, be active in the Discord community, because the more it grows, the more people it reaches, and the more we can do for the animals. So being active, part of the community, and uh, liking the content, leaving comments like proper content is super important because it helps us get uh, spread out into the virtual universe. <laughs> Good question. Next up is Jules. I want to be a flying bear. I don't know if that's a question or a statement or I'm assuming it's something to do with the game. We, we had some videos where we were flying around with the characters. My answer is going to be no. Next question is from Sipon VR. What is the most challenging part of your job? What is the most challenging part of my job? I think it's more or less just a matter of always being here. The suit director, also my mother, Joanne, hadn't had a vacation for 20 years because we simply can't leave the place. You have the responsibilities for all of these lives. If something goes wrong, if the power goes off, is the heat goes down in the winter if someone escapes by accident or whatever reason we need to be here simply also because there's nobody else that has as much experience as we have with the animals and the place in itself so uh, 
I think that's the hardest part that you don't really have like it, it, it almost sounds like a cliche but you seriously don't have any other life it's the only thing you have in your life and that is being here so so yeah I guess that's also why I'm doing this because I get somewhere already in my life by doing the streams and games and, and all that stuff and it, it's something that potentially you know is gonna help the rescue sue out a lot so uh, yeah I think we're already in my day and, and maybe seeing something else than the rescue sue now and then would make the job you know a little easier um, yeah. next question coming from Pia uh, you did a bunch of animal enrichment this season which one were you most happy with and why um, I have to think back we have over a thousand hours streamed so enrichment 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 we did a lot as Pia saying uh, said I think one of my favorites probably were with Anton we built this thing for Anton uh, on stream, me, Nilla, and Lesebesse, <laughs> which were really fun. And I know Anton has been having a lot of fun with it. And, and you know, he, he it's hard to create variety in an enclosure for the camels because they're so large. You can't really go in there and, and build them a little tunnel or <laughs> give them a swing or something. So being actually able to build something for our Lord and Savior, the one, the only, our beautiful Bactrian camel, Anton, was... Uh, I was happy with that. Next question. It's coming from Overspeed Killer. How was it growing up around all these animals? Um, how was it? I mean, parts of it was great. Simple answer. <laughs> so, again, you get a bit secluded. You also kind of have something different. And from a kid's perspective, also a lot of adults' perspective, some people might see it as you have something we don't, so we don't like you, if it makes sense. Um, not that I want to stir up old stuff, but it wasn't all good, to be honest. Um, coming from the city, going out to a country area and stuff, it was quite hard, to be honest. Um, but yeah, there are different aspects, good and bad, like everything else in life, I would say, yeah. We have another question from teacher. What is the next animal to be housed in the zoo? Um, I don't actually know. I mean, we're working intensely on these circus lions. We want to create an enclosure for and help rescue them. But again, it's all a matter of money. Um, so I don't actually know. Did we get... I think we just got a couple of prairie dogs in actually here the other day. Um, I think they are on bag and we're building an enclosure for them. I think they're getting the meerkats old enclosure when they are getting the otters old enclosure and the otters are getting the new otter enclosure. That's how it's gonna be. Beach attack uh, is coming with the next question. What animals was the hardest to deal with when it first came in? Probably the Java monkeys, the biggest rescue project in the rescue zoo's history. The 18 Java monkeys came from the medical industry where they've been done, used for testing. Initially, it was a group of 100 monkeys. We said no because we couldn't house 100 monkeys. <coughs> Sorry. Um, we took 18 of them and uh, rehabilitating monkeys and primates and animals in general that have been under small confined spaces, being used for testing, uh, misused. They don't really have any natural normal behavior left. And uh, I think Alex has said it a couple of times in both videos and I think she said it in the last podcast actually. Rehabilitating them is very hard, even just giving them enrichment because they get so frustrated, they're not used to it. So just giving them branches to sit with and not get into fights is a huge deal. Um, so yeah, Java monkeys, I, I would say, yeah. Rinat coming with another question. How often do you wear the fish slippers? Just always. <laughs> Next question is coming from Mighty Owl. How did your parents end up wanting a zoo? I think I kind of answered that question before. Because I wanted a bunny. No. <laughs> no, I think I think it was something they, they had a vacation house here in this countryside. I've had it like 20 years plus or something before. Now 40 years I think I've had it or something. Uh, and my dad used to grow out up in this area in Copenhagen. So when they saw that the local place was about to be shut down and was for sale, um, I was very sick in Copenhagen because of pollution and air and stuff. So it was like a natural, 
little thing that kind of happened um, without they even noticing, and uh, all of a sudden they had a zoo, and uh, later on a rescue zoo. So, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's YouTube video, and if you did, leave that thumbs, subscribe, bell, leave a comment, and uh, hopefully I will see you in the next video. Who's Nico here for the rescue zoo with Ayo, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you again very soon. Bye. <laughs>